Welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul Show on Conscious Evolution Media, our network. I'm your host, Coach Steve Toth, and uh, also the founder of Conscious Evolution Media. And our guest today is Ten Rose. And Ten is an author, and he wrote a couple of books. We're going to be talking about that throughout the show. And he's joining us somewhere from the East Coast. Welcome to the show, Ten. Well, thank you very much, Coach. Always fun to be here with you. Yes, you are a kind of a re returning guest. You've been on our network a few times, right? Yeah, two or three at least, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this could be the fourth. Who knows? Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about you. Uh, don't start at birth. Just share a little story <laughs> about 10. Uh, how did you get to, like, you know, today? But just give us a summary for our viewers. How did you know I was going to start at birth? Because yeah, I know you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I'm in Massachusetts now. Just got here from uh, seven years in New Mexico. And uh, during all that time, and a few years before, I've been working on this project to fund Tibetan monks and nuns and other assorted wisdom professionals. Uh, the funding vehicles for this are the two books that I wrote, Fearless Puppy on American Road and Reincarnation Through Common Sense. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing in a relatively different and interesting setting here. I was in isolation for most of the last 10 years working, and now I'm with three little kids running around constantly screaming. So that's a little bit of a change of pace, keeping me awake, you know, in, in, in every sense of that word. Phrase, and, and conscious, because kids are very conscious, you know. That you don't have a choice but to stay awake <laughs> with them, really. And, and like I said, in every sense of the phrase, staying awake. So, yeah. So uh, that's been kind of fun. How you been? You're busy over there too, aren't you? Well, uh, yeah, we've been extremely, extremely busy. We uh, mm -hmm. launched our new website. Uh, we launched it about a month ago, mm -hmm. and I know that you've seen it. Yeah. And you mean. If you want to, you could share your impression, expression, whatever. It's, you... it's great. I left a comment there. I thought it was excellent. Had a, a lot of good information, readily accessible, attractively packaged. I mean, it had everything a website's supposed to have over there. Right. Yeah. Our 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 real um, goal was is to uh, make it simple to navigate for everybody, because uh, the previous website that I that I built, which we still have. Real Coaching Radio and TV Network, because um, uh, that network is really the parent company of Conscious Evolution Media. But um, I built that in, probably took me about five years, and it got so convoluted and so busy <laughs> uh -huh. that sometimes even I couldn't figure out how to get around. Uh -huh. So once you get to that place, it's time it's time for change. Right. <laughs> right. Now, so, one, yeah, the yeah. new website has everything pretty accessible. I mean, it's right there at your fingertips. So. Right, it's pretty simple, and uh, so it's really all about our you know, TV shows, our cable TV shows, which we now have three, and um, also it's about our live broadcasts, and there's something even new coming. We're launching in August uh, an e-learning uh, part of our website, which uh, is we're going to use the same technology that you and I are using right now uh, for a lot of the uh, uh, coaches and also people in uh, small business, any type of business that relates to uh, any of our channels, any of our seven channels, to be able to, you know, run a uh, small conference or a small course. And uh, we even have all the tools uh, within our system uh, to be able to have the students uh, kind of run through everything in a digital fashion. So all the material, the training material, will be digitally available, the videos will be digitally available, and uh, everything is going to be just really easy and cool, and they can even get certified um, when they finish the course. So I'm looking forward to that. It's something I wanted to have for some time, but, um, you know, everything happens when the right time comes, right? Yeah, yeah well, you got to be able to do it, too. You're a pretty sharp guy. I have trouble with the email sometimes, but you can figure all these computer things out pretty well. So. <laughs> So, so I'm like so fascinated with uh, with your background because when you were young, and of course I couldn't help myself, I had to find some pictures of you when 
you were young. And, oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you reminded me, you know, of a hippie. And uh -huh. so when, um, when I was in my 20s, and I don't know if you were older than me. Um, I'm, I'll be I 62. I can't tell. Well, you two years older than me. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, you were, we were pretty close in age, and uh -huh. so when I, when I, when you were my age, you know, a teenager, I was, uh, I was uh, living in a communist country in Hungary, and um, I was actually very much looking up to uh, America, the United States, uh, everything that was made in America. I was looking up to all the hippies, the love movement, the flower movement. Tell us a little bit about that, because that still, after all these years, it still yeah. fascinates me. Well, and it still fascinates a lot of people, because even as Americans, you say you were looking up to it uh, from Hungary, even as Americans, I think that's the last time we looked up to ourselves. <laughs> 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 Actually, things have gone steadily downhill ever since then, truth be known, you know, all the real real leaders of conscience got killed off and things have been getting progressively commercialized ever since then. There's been a little bit more of a uh, stress put on your money and, and uh, the economic situation and a little bit less. There was at that time quite a rise in spiritual concerns amongst the people. Yeah, and, I think we uh, need to get back there. There's no question about that. That's, you know, a, a basic thing that has gone very wrong. And it is within the last 50 years since that period of time that it seems to have taken this downhill turn, which doesn't mean to say that the world or, or the country, for that matter, is completely devoid of spirituality or conscience at this point. It's just that it's a lot less popular than it used to be. Right, and definitely love... Something happened to love. I don't know what happened. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, but, I was, but I'm I'm certainly committed to bring that back because if you notice, uh -huh. we even changed our logo, and uh, you know the the Earth used to be flat, and then it was round, and now I made it to be heart shaped. Um, so hopefully, I won't get prosecuted for it. No, it's, I like your idea because a lot of people are trying to make it flat again. So making it heart shaped <laughs> is certainly an improvement. Yeah. Yeah, so so that way it doesn't even require explanation in terms of what we are about. It's just people should be able to connect to it, you know, right away. Yeah. So so te tell us a uh, tell us a few maybe a few little stories. I I love the way you you tell stories. Just a few stories uh, because obviously the first book that you well maybe not be obvious for everybody, but it's obvious to me by now that the Fearless Puppy book on the American Road is really about your life. It's about um, you know how you were able to live most of your life, uh, present life, present moment uh, uh -huh. is accept is is an exception, but most of your life you were basically living without what you could call a home. Your home was your body and your mind and your spirit, and you just traveled all over the world. Yeah, well, my home's still my body, mind, and spirit, and I think it's pretty much true of everybody. I mean, they may be distracted by these other things, you know, the bills, the, the, all the things that people attach their consciousness to and spend their lives focusing on. Uh, these are all important parts of life, family, and, and all the rest of it. But... Uh, some of that, and that's another thing that has been lost since that period of time to a large extent, not altogether certainly, uh, is that connection with self, that just knowing who you are and go doing what you want to do. I mean, we, uh, for better or worse, and a lot of times it didn't end up so good. I get a lot of dead friends from overdoses that over-experimented. I actually was one of them and got brought back. But we had this spirit that we were going to do what we were going to do, and we were not intimidated or attached by what we had been fed by our parents, the churches, the media. Uh, we knew that black people deserved equal rights with white people. We knew that women deserved equal rights with men. We knew that war was inferior to peace and a number of other things that... Uh, you know, got some attention back then, 
and got to be moving in a more positive direction. And um, yeah, yeah, I, th I think that pretty much speaks to that. Not only that period of time, but but, but what has to make a little bit of comeback here, as we were saying before. Mm -hmm. you know? So, in, in your travels, um, when you got to, how many different continents uh, have you traveled? Oh, not that many. Actually, most of my travel has been within the United States, where I've been to every state except Hawaii. But uh, I was spent a year and a half in Thailand and uh, a lot of time in Mexico on and off over a period of 10 years. I probably spent a total of... Uh, a year and a half or two there, coming and going a month or two here, a month or two there. Yeah. Uh, so not still haven't been to Europe, but that uh, might be happening because somebody in Germany has gotten real excited about Fearless Puppy and is now, as we speak, doing a German translation of it. And they know okay. some people in the book biz over there, and uh, with any luck, something will jump over there and I'll go get to see Europe. Fantastic. So, so, yeah, really most of the travel has been within America. And a lot of those, you say the book is about me and about my life. I, did, I like to think of it as having heavy autobiographical uh, override. But it really could be about anybody, you know. I mean, I don't know anybody who has not his 80 little chapters in Fearless Puppy. I don't know if there isn't a reader I have spoken with yet that hasn't said I did that or I did something like that about at least one of those. Now, admittedly, some of them <laughs> are a little bit bizarre and there's nobody else. In. I mean, very few people have been to an all-lesbian concert played for the deaf people, you know. That was one of them <laughs> that I think is a relatively unique experience. Yeah, and, uh, you know, but a lot of those things in there are common experiences, especially for people who are age. The second book's going to be different. Reincarnation Through Common Sense was written in a Buddhist temple in Southeast Asia. And there's a thousand white boy in a Buddhist temple books. But uh, this one is quite unusual mm -hmm. in that I didn't go there to study Buddhism. Mm -hmm. I was uh, like crazy, alcoholic, suicidal got rescued by the monks and nuns and adopted basically by them. I mean, the head monk told me, I'm your older brother, these are your brothers and sisters, just come stay here. So it's a very unique perspective, especially since nobody there spoke English and I didn't speak the language that they were speaking. So uh, it was pretty much every once in a while a friend of mine would come over and translate between me and somebody. But uh, by and large, I was in there with a bunch of folks who didn't speak the same language. And mainly, I wasn't going there to study Buddhism. As it turned out, I probably learned a whole lot more than I would have if I had gone there to study Buddhism. Because I was so wide open to, you know, sometimes you, you're looking to focus on something. And sometimes you get so myopic that you miss the point and float right past it, and you're trying to pick up details in order to get somewhere that you're almost already at if you just open your brain up to it a little bit. And this was yeah. one of those situations where I think I probably learned a whole lot more about spirituality by living with the monks and nuns and not being there to study anything of the sort. So, yeah. uh, so And you were yeah. open. It sounds like you were also open, which is... Oh, yeah. I, I feel one of the major requirements of uh, the possibility of being awake and being conscious. You know, if you're not open, that, that's, yeah. not, that's not possible. Yeah, and a lot of time, I mean, obviously it's a lot better if you do this just by directing yourself positively and saying, I want to be open, I want to, you know, be present for all the opportunities that present themselves. But a lot of times it's tragedy and disaster that brings people to these points where they open up to these kind of things. And uh, such was the case for me. I mean, I didn't have a dime in my pocket, and I was a little bit loopy in the head. I'd been taken advantage of by some local people, and like I uh, thought I was going to kill it with alcohol, and obviously that never works. So, so that 
combination and in a country where I didn't speak the language and nobody else spoke mine. So uh, that combination of things, that total lost in the woods, I mean, it's like being a baby all over again, you know, you're just wide open to whatever comes along. And thank whatever there is to thank that I was dropped in the middle of a bunch of monks and nuns because, yeah, you, you couldn't get any better of a setting than that. I mean, no, yeah. Ad yeah, no adoption agency in the world could do that good a job. So, yeah, I can I can relate to you, Tim, because I, I came to this country without speaking English and I came to New York and it's a little bit different than monks. Uh, New York is a little bit rougher. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Brooklyn. That's why I'm laughing. Yeah, <laughs> but but here I am. Yeah. Um, so I made it. Uh, yeah. But what are the what are the other things I'm really curious about? And and I and I know that you have something to share about this. Is that um, I I'm I'm continuously being uh, curious and motivated by finding out as much as I can about community and how to build community. Um, what, what, could you, what could you offer our, our viewers about, about that? Because a lot of people talk about it, but very few make it happen. How to build a community. Um, it depends what kind of community you're talking about. Now, I'm living in a small rural community now. Everybody gets to know everybody, and your basic golden rule covers everything. Uh, it's just like you be nice to people, they get to know you. Even the folks who don't know you, they know somebody who knows somebody. Oh, yeah, I met that guy while he was hitchhiking. He's pretty cool. So then the next guy figures it's comfortable to pick you up hitchhiking. You get to know him, go over, and just by, by natural process, by being, you know, a decent human being, you would get to know, you know, build a community like that and become part of, an actual community that you're in. As far as there's a whole new slant on this now, of course, with the internet, because I'm building community around the books, and there's a community of fearless puppy people, of reincarnation through common sense people, of folks that go to, I got like 7,000 followers all together between my personal page and, uh, and, and the two book pages, you know. Mm, and right. uh, other networks as well. So that internet community, this new definition of community, where it reaches internationally in an instant by pushing a button, is a whole different tune. See, you told me to turn the cell phones off, and I didn't put it back downstairs. I brought this one up here. Mm -hmm. but That's how it goes. There we go. We got it over as far <laughs> as the back now. Huh? Yeah, so that's a, it's a different tune building an internet community and this new modern definition of community, which is, which is a whole lot different than growing up in a neighborhood in Brooklyn where that's your community. Or, you know, this is where what we call community now is like all-encompassing, really. And that just takes going out there and you're, you're basically the same thing. You present yourself to people. You have the motivation, first of all to make the contact uh, if it's a positive motivation and you're not making the contact with people in order to to sell babies or something you know but in order to circulate some good information and try to help somebody you stand a much better chance of establishing a community so that, if you were if you were going to build a spiritual com community how would you go about it an actual physical one or an on the internet one uh, well, I would say both, both, and uh, it, it wouldn't be just about spirituality, but it would be about, you know, people that are awake and connected, and, um, right. and ways to, uh, ways to hang out, and uh, support and support each other. How would you go about that? Uh, you got to present information to folks that would attract their interest, and then they keep coming back. So I take articles that I write in pieces from the book and post them on WordPress and, and, and different places, Ground Report, and uh, then the people like that, the website's on that, and they come to a central place. The website is the central place, I guess, in the Internet culture. So you put your stuff out to all these people in all the various, various venues, and... Uh, I gotta put my earphones back on. I'm not used to having them here. I slipped them, and uh, 
Yeah, and th and then you just hope that you run into common ground with folks to the point where they would want to come back to your website. Now, if you're building an actual community where people live, that's kind of a different tune because you can get along with somebody for a half hour on the internet, especially when it's a one-way conversation and they're reading your stuff and there's not much of a response necessary. That's a little bit more of a shallow level community, valuable and important. But as far as like actually dealing with people in real life and living with them in a community setting, I'm finding out right now how much different that can be than establishing an internet community. I mean, that takes a lot more doing. Right. Know? What about what about getting people to be or get them to engage? With the community, meaning that they would actually get get busy um, supporting the community, and they would also get to support for themselves. How would you go about that? Um, by inspiring them with something, that motivating them with something that demonstrates that this is going to be beneficial. Your participation in this community would be beneficial to yourself and to a lot of other people as well. And that your participation makes a difference. I think that's a major problem in America that uh, this period of time we were talking about 50 years ago didn't have that problem. People believe that if they got out there in March that something could change. And folks nowadays it seems are a little bit more jaded in that regard. They don't think, I mean, look at the percentage of folks that vote. It's pretty low. You know? People just don't believe that they can make a difference to that. Exactly, exactly. And so in order to get this participation from people in, in the community that we're speaking of, whichever one it is, uh, then it, you have to let the people know to a point where they believe it that their participation actually makes a difference and uh, at least to their own benefit and also to other people's benefits as well and uh, I think that very few people if they actually believe that if they thought to the point where they knew that doing something was going to accomplish something there would be getting a lot more people involved in everything mm. you know any, anything that fit that criteria. It's just that a lot of folks, uh, I mean, there's always going to be lazy bastards that just don't want to put in the work. They want to sit there and have it brought to them. <laughs> and there's no way around that. But we're talking about... I had many partners like that. Yeah, yeah, who has it, right? <laughs> they just want to get to the money and they don't want to do anything for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, you know, but when you're talking about, like, that's that's a whole different story, but we're talking about the people who actually would do something who would put in a little bit of effort, who would push a share button under a piece on a on a Facebook page. Not much effort, but 95% of people won't do it if you ask them, even though right. it's just pushing a button, just because there's that trigger in their brain that tells them that nothing's going to pop here. There's no sense doing this. They've been so frustrated by all the... They're like, oh, come and do this, and it'll be better for you, and then it's nothing. Oh, yeah, come I, and do this, and it'll be better for you, and then it's nothing. You know, yeah, I, they, go ahead. Excuse yeah, me. I actually have a, a kind of a good example of this just happened over the weekend. Um, I had some friends over Friday, and uh, we, we were having dinner, and um, what was interesting, I was having a conversation with this lady who used to be a teacher for many, many, many years, and we were having a conversation about things that I don't talk about here on the network, uh, which had to do with um, uh, politics and religion. And uh, uh, somehow we got to a conversation about one of the biggest retailers in the in the world, which happens to be Walmart. Wow. And um, she was describing to me and was pretty harsh uh, towards the company. And she was saying, "Well, um, they." Um, you know, you know how how they get to that uh, cheap price and how they get to beat all the other competition is that they take advantage of their employees and they take advantage of their suppliers. <clears throat> and I and said, they're, okay. 
and the goods are produced by slave labor might have something to do with it too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, and the owners, you know, we know we all know who the owners are, and they are billionaires, and uh, and so I said, okay, well, that's a that's a really good point, and uh, so most of the conversation that we had until that point was about really talking about all the problems and uh, uh, just getting a, a real picture of uh, doesn't matter where we look, uh, things are not working. And so I said, okay, well, maybe it's time to get into a conversation about how do we solve uh, these issues and problems that seem so huge that most people just wouldn't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. So I asked her a question and said, so my question to you is, after what you just told me, is when was the last time you were in Walmart supporting them? She said, two days ago. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, Ted, what's wrong with that picture? Oh, it's obvious. I mean, I don't know if you ever saw the TV show South Park. Yes. But that, did yes. you see the Walmart episode? Uh, I don't remember. Right? It was it was just fantastic. And at the end, it turns out where they find the secret. How did you know they're trying to destroy Walmart? The kids in South Park. So they find the secret, and it's a mirror. It's a mirror in, in the Walmart. And so mm -hmm. you are the heart of Walmart. All you have mm -hmm. to do is not show up, and yeah. the job is done. It's over. You yeah, know? it's over. It's they no, they no longer in control. Right. Yeah. Right. And that that holds true for almost everything. I mean, if you take control of your own mind and your own life back, and of course, this is pretty difficult because we've been beaten down a lot. We've been drawn with the carrot on the stick, you know. Like, come here, this is going to be good for you, come here, this is going to... And then they pull the carrot away, and they don't ever give you the carrot. So there's only so many times this can happen before people's minds get programmed to that, well, I'm not even going to go after the carrot anymore, because I, then nobody's ever going to let me get it, and there's nothing that can be accomplished by my effort. And once you feel that there's nothing that can be accomplished by your effort, then you start getting into this kind of hypocrisy where you're yelling at the Walmart and shopping at it at the same time. Yeah. And that's yeah. just flat out blatant hypocrisy. You know? Yeah, and I you know, I call it being resigned and cynical. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there were so many instances of this and you can't you can blame the lady because I mean but you can't at the same time. Because we get so beaten by these like lead ins and drawbacks and lead ins and drawbacks. Oh yeah, you can have this now when it gets there the whole thing collapses, you got nothing. Uh, you can have this now when you get there the whole thing. And if that keeps happening over and over again, I mean it's like a dog that's been whipped too much. After a while he sees a newspaper and he starts cowering in the corner. He doesn't know you're picking it up just to read it. He thinks he's getting hit with it. So I mean if people get that kind of frustration about them, then they're going to start, you know, I, and let's face it, this country is founded on bullshit to begin with. As a nation of slave owners, really, it's a nation of slave owners who wanted to be free. They, just got, they just got much more sophisticated, didn't they? Yeah, how much closer to a paper asshole do you get? I mean, it's a nation of slave owners that wanted to be free, and that's not you know, what, what this woman is doing is just as hypocritical, but a lot less, you know, a lot more innocent, I would, I would think, because she really doesn't have any else. She really wants to see Walmart shut. But yeah, but you see, everybody's doing that. Anything. So when everybody's yeah. doing that, you're giving up your freedom and you're, right. you're giving up your power uh, to, to the people that you're complaining about. So Exactly. So, you know, the, the, the fact that you are justifying it to yourself by saying, well, I can't possibly make a difference by myself. Unfortunately, there's millions of people uh, saying that to themselves, that by themselves they can't make a difference. Uh -huh. But but they've got to realize that if, if they all stop, they're going to make a huge difference. Within a moment, it all yeah. it takes. Absolutely. Just, just, just don't go to Walmart for one day in this well, nation. Do you think yeah. you're going to get their attention? Uh -huh. Yeah, and they do that in other places. In America, we seem to be a little bit too comfortable to pull that off. We don't want to give up our fat-ass lifestyle. But I've noticed that in other countries, not that I've ever been to Europe, but I've heard about like general strikes in France where they get pissed off about something, and they just don't go to work that day. 
the buses don't run, the taxes on the goods sold don't get paid. Everybody figures out right away that if they want the country to, you know, start functioning again, the politicians figure out that we better give these people what they want. There's that let them eat cake stuff went out a long time ago over there and uh, still seems to be a little bit prevalent over here. You know, I still, <laughs> starting to move more in that direction during the past 40 or 50 years as well. So. <laughs> yeah, we, I think we just seem to be much, much uh, slower in, in terms of responding to, you know, what really matters and how do we, how do we really claim uh, our responsibility and accountability for what we don't like or what we like about our lives. Um, and, and I think it's time to that people claim that it's um, th there's no messing around much anymore because if we if we continue to mess around the way we have, um, I don't think we have much 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 more time to to enjoy what we have built here. Mm -hmm. you, you know the good old saying that you know it, it took many many years for Rome to build what they built, but it only took one day to destroy. It. Yeah. Yeah, it could happen just as quickly here or be over a long period of time, or everything could improve. That would be nice. But in order for everything to improve, uh, much as you say, personal responsibility, as that woman is going to have to not only talk about Walmart in the way that she talks about them, but not shop there. I mean, this is basic. This isn't rocket science. Yeah, it's not. You, know? you don't need a PhD to figure this out. No, no. And yeah. it's the old, it, this analogy of the drops in the ocean has been very much uh, overused, but that's because there's really nothing else I can think of, and a lot of other people can't either, that's as applicable to all these situations. We are the drops that make up the ocean. You can't just stand there and yell at the ocean. You're polluted. Get cleaner. You know what's wrong with you, you dumbass ocean. Come on, do something. Because the <laughs> ocean, the ocean is only composed of us drops. So yeah. if we don't do the job, you yeah, know, the drops um, need to get cleaned up. The and all of a sudden, we have a clean up. ocean. That's right. Because yeah. the drops are the ocean. And the ocean and mass, but nothing's going to happen there until the individual drops start being less full of caca, which applies in so many, uh, so <laughs> many different, you know, manners that I can't start enumerating them. But yeah. yeah so, like, so then, what would what could we do, or say that would inspire people to clean up their own drops? Jay, that, it, would, that it just didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, it's pretty accurate on several fronts. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would say start small. Do something that you can succeed with, all right? Five minutes a day of sitting still in a chair is going to clear the average person's mind to the point where they're going to function better. Everybody's, like, running around having all these constant out-of-body experiences, and it's not in the big, grandiose spiritual sense, but in the sense of, like, you're always thinking about work and the budget and the job and the wife and the kids and the house and the traffic tickets and everything else. And the bills. And the, news, and the bills and the news <laughs> and uh, what the guy down the street thinks of you and uh, all this other stuff that's really not as applicable or as important as what's going on right here in your brain. Because when that is cleared up and straightened out, then all the other stuff starts to fall into place. I mean, a lot of people think if they get all their external things straightened out and all those ducks in a row, that then they're going to have internal happiness and everything's going to be okay. When in fact, it has long been proven that exactly the opposite is true. That if you get your interior situation cleaned up and straightened out and those ducks in a row, then the external situation will tend to fall into place a lot easier. Yeah. The so world just changes, right? Everything, once, once we change, the entire world changes. There, there's no such thing as a noun. Everything's a verb. Mm. You know, Even a rock is a verb. It's changing all the time. Right. So... You know, the, the, yeah, everything's changing all the time, but there has to be something 
that facilitates that change. And there's nothing like the human mind for facilitating change. I mean, when the human mind changes, everything around it moves. Yeah. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the second book, which is Reincarnation Through Common Sense. Well, my experience is that common sense is basically gone. <laughs> that's not common, that's for sure. <laughs> common sense is no longer common. That's, that's a certainty. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a unique commodity anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So what's that book about? Uh, it's about uh, life in a temple for half a year. I lived in a Buddhist temple in Southeast Asia and again didn't go there with the intention of studying any Buddhism. Uh, was basically adopted, although not officially on paper. The guy told me you're part of this family now and just like relax, do whatever you want. If you want to go to the beach and swim, go ahead. If you want to do any of the meditations with us, you can. And uh, the reincarnation part, well, common sense speaks for itself. I mean, the common sense was to not be aggravated by all these external things and to keep the internal focus positive. Get back within your own body instead of like, oh, I hate him or I love them, I got to have this or I'm repulsed by that. And you're always thinking about things outside yourself, the bills, the fights, the lights, whatever it is. Um, the internal mechanism is more important, and that's the commonsensical part of it. I mean, once you get your internal mechanism and your internal mentality working to the point where you realize that you really do want to be happy and that everything runs from inside, things pretty much tend to take care of themselves. The reincarnation part uh, probably deserves a little bit more explanation because most people think of reincarnation as you die and then your soul migrates to another body or something or you become a dog or an elephant or a person or again or whatever. And that's not the reincarnation that is referred to in the book. Uh, that reincarnation is more of a daily thing and there are schools of thought even within Buddhism where the die and go to heaven thing is the not go to heaven but get recycled into a new body thing uh, is, is a little bit more of the common perception of reincarnation but there are a lot of Buddhists and a lot of theory behind that that's not what the Buddha meant. Did you read the Book of Dead? Yeah, 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 and and much like uh, you know, like the Bible and a million other things, it can be translated literally or it can be translated symbolically. Now, when you concretize the symbols, you tend to run into trouble. Whereas when you take the symbols as being symbolic, then you, you get probably what was originally meant by the people who first propagated this information. And one of the things that it is supposed by certain schools of thought that the Buddha actually meant by reincarnation is that every time you perform an action, you're a new person. You're who you were plus the effect of that action because that action causes karma, which is what everything is all about in the long run. Uh, you want something, you get it. You eat it, then it's gone. Then that leaves you with the craving and you want it again. You go and that repetitive cycle is the karma that keeps us going. Whereas the reincarnation would be to get up fresh and realize that every time that you want to think about it, not only the first thing when you get up in the morning, but every time it, you want to think about it, there are unlimited possibilities besides your standard thing that you're stuck in, been educated about, been programmed, been driven by fear into, been driven by obligation into, whatever has set your mind to where it is and the patterns that you're in are still a figment to your imagination. <laughs> you made them up and you live it by them. True, other people made them up and fed them to you a lot, but you ate them and you live it by them. That's your nutrition. You are and most you. of us are stuck in it. And most of us think we're stuck in it. We're not stuck in it. But yes, most of us think we're stuck in it. Most of us, and I've used this analogy before, it's like we're running down a river 
and, and we're stuck in the river and floating along with the current and have no, the river is so wide or so it seems to us that we have no concept there's a bank on either side to get up and crawl out on and go do something else. We think we're just caught in the flow, this is life, this is the way it is, and we make the best of it and finagle a little bit to get things more comfortable here and there and do what we can, never realizing that it's we made the whole damn thing up. <laughs> we made it up. And we can make up something else just as easy. If you want And the river may not even exist. Yeah, if you want to exactly that's another one. That's another one for sure. <laughs> But I mean, the, the basic point, if you want to get up out of that chair right now and go into a bell tower with a rifle and become a sniper, you can do it. If you want to get up out of that chair right now and devote the rest of your life to picking up sick and dying people off the street and cleaning their wounds, you can go do it. And if you want to keep doing what you're doing, you can keep doing it. This applies to everybody in the world. There is absolute, it may look like there are things holding you where you are, and indeed there are, you know, it's not without difficulty that any of this happens, you know. I mean, you do have to detach from certain things that you're habitually attached to, and that's the definition of hell. When you're craving something and you can't have it, and you're used to having something and you think you should have it, then that deprivation is hell. When something is forced on you, when you're repulsed by something, and you have to deal with it. That's the definition of hell. And people think that they're stuck in these situations. The truth of the matter is, you can pick your butt up and go do anything you want at any given time, at any location that you want to do it. And true, it takes a whole lot more work in some places than it does in others and with some people than it does with others and in some situations. But the fact of the matter is that that reincarnation is a very real possibility in any given moment of your life. I mean, we've all known at least one person who just stopped on a dime, dropped their alcohol habit or whatever kind of habit. We all know at least one. True, we know a lot of people who never got out of that rut. But we all know at least one who just said, I'm not doing this anymore. I finally had it. And they did. And they stopped doing whatever, quit smoking cigarettes, which are more addictive than heroin to my mind, and, mm -hmm. and, and like all these other things. So people certainly have the capability to do whatever, whenever. And that is the reincarnation part as referred to in my book, Reincarnation Through Common Sense. The common sense part is a little more obvious and a little more scarce. But <laughs> well, I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to understand also, maybe there's nothing to understand, and you can straighten, straighten me out here in a second, but how did you make the connection between common sense and reincarnation? reincarnation? So what's, or what's the connection? Uh, the connection is that you have to use common sense to realize that there is this definition of reincarnation. All right? It's only common sense that gets you there. It's not magic. It doesn't fall out of the sky. You don't need to be blessed by a priest or a monk or a nun or anything. There's no magic wand that waves over you and poof, all of a sudden, you can do whatever you want every day and change your life as you see fit and be affected by your own thoughts and actions to the degree that you want to. It's just common sense. It's not, you know, it's not some, like, major episode that has to happen to do this. All you got to do is commonsensically realize that it's right in front of you. You know, I mean, it's a really a lot of this, it's, uh, I don't go biblical too much, but there's a couple of passages yes, in there that hold. <laughs> and, uh, Please don't. I, yeah, no, no, I don't <laughs> as a rule. But one in there that, that impresses me and always has is the one where he says the kingdom of heaven is all over the place. It's just that people don't see it, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is they committed to the kingdom of hell. Yeah, and yeah, it's and right they, here, right now. Yeah, and both of them, <laughs> both of them are. Both of them. And, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I got a line in my book that says uh, God can't be too intelligent. He thinks that heaven and hell are in different places. Uh, and, no. You know, and, no. and I don't believe they are. You know? They're both present right now. 
They're both present, and uh, <laughs> but yeah, they're both up here too. That's my experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if I if I changed uh, the title of your book to this, how close would I be to what you really meant by it? So, if I changed it to um, the reincarnation of being completely open-minded to realize that anything and everything is possible. It's a little long, but it certainly covers the point. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't think the printer would probably be a little ticked off, but no, okay. <laughs> as, as far as uh, the no, actual... I, I went more for the meaning of it, not not necessarily... As far the as the meaning, it. it's right there, yeah. Uh, okay. It's right there, sure. Okay, cool. That's very cool. So, um, I, I, I do want to talk about uh, both of the books, and I want to talk about them a little bit separately. So let's talk about the first one, The Fearless Puppy on the American Road. Can I uh, talk for just a second first about what's more important than the books, which is that they're not really books, they're a project. Okay. Uh, all right, the uh, project is to raise funds to sponsor an increase in the wisdom professionals on the planet, because as we can see by reading any newspaper, there's quite a shortage of wisdom in the world. Yeah. And, so you uh, figured out how to manage your host. Pardon? You you figured out how to manage your host. I don't get it. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> that one went yeah. right over this my is, head. This is important because uh, <laughs> I teach I teach people how to uh, how to manage their guests. Oh. And and it exists in both realms. <laughs> oh, I see. All right. <laughs> now, I can I can never think of myself as managing you. You're the coach. Oh, that's okay. You just did it, and, uh -huh. and you did it wonderfully. All right. Well, <laughs> the thing is, we need more people like you, uh, and and like the guests that you often have. I'm not so wise, but you got a bunch of them that come on that I've seen that are pretty good, and uh, and and this is the point of the books altogether. I mean, I'm not an author. I've accidentally written some real good books, according to what people tell me. Uh, they like the books a lot, but um, that is not what I was trying to do. It's a project to raise funds to increase the number of wisdom professionals on Earth, and that's really the focus of uh, what these books are all about. Uh, okay, so let, let, let's clarify for, for our viewers also. Is, um what do you mean by wisdom professionals? And and to clarify one more time that the the income that you would be receiving by selling these books goes to goes to this cause, correct? Right. Okay. Right. Which is and the only how reason. Can, for how the can the viewers system. tell that you don't have a personal agenda and um, spend the money on something else? Why the hell would I bother to say that I'm giving it to monks and nuns if I'm going to spend it? Like this is an auth. I mean, I'm not going around. Collected for a charity like the United Way, and then we'll pocket the money. These are books that I wrote. I have a perfect right to pocket the money, you know. But that's just not what I'm going to do. And if okay. people don't believe that, then they can come and follow me around and watch what I'm doing. And in actuality, the next book that I hope to write is uh, well, there might be another one coming before. But the book that I hope to write eventually is about what gets done with the funds. So there will be the proof right there awesome. as, as far as what gets done with the funds that come in from book sales because I'm going to write a book just about that. As Here's the money you guys spent reading the books. I know you would have bought the books anyways, but uh, this is where the money went to and then I'll explain what we've actually gotten done with the funds that come in from the books. Okay, and what awesome. we're trying to get done is increase the number of people with the type of common sense that we've been talking about for the past hour. With the type of common sense that realizes that anything is a possibility, that you can wake up in the morning and become anything that you want, that you can make a difference, and they can communicate this to people who need to hear it, which is like, nearly everybody nowadays <laughs> you know and uh, and that's the whole point of it so so that's uh, that's what the books are really about now we can go into talking about the content of the books that'd be fine but I just did want to make that point first because really the books are about this project and not 
then they're not like written because somebody wanted to be an author or anything like that. Yeah, no, I think that's fine for us to be really clear. Uh, there's a lot of confusing, confusing things out there. So I think we're being perfectly clear mm -hmm. that what you're doing is raising money for a cause by selling right. these books, and people are going to get, um, you know, some 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 very um, great value, uh, and you're actually serving people, you know, to make a difference in the world. And that's what we've been talking about for the past hour. Also, right. is that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the reason why I am I am still dedicated to this network and will continue to. Is because I don't think that we can say these things enough. I mean, I had, you know, fourteen thousand interviews <laughs> in the last ten years, and I certainly have said many things that I have said over and over and over again. But guess what? There are seven billion of us on this planet, and 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 I can't. I don't think I can say it enough in terms of why love is so important, which is how we start started the show. Without love, we have nothing, and we have replaced money. You know, now we, it's not love that's important. What's important is money. Yeah. And did you notice that money makes a lot of people very angry <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and pissed off, in your yeah. words? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it makes them uh, act a little bit nastier than they, they use it as an excuse for, you know, being a little bit more of a jackass than a human being is allowed to be as a rule, you know. But because it's business, that's okay. I've known a few people like that. I knew a construction guy who put uh, faulty concrete into a job, and he said, "Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, but that's business, you know, like as if it's okay, because it's within the realm of making money, and that is the way it's done." That you know, and Mark Twain had a great saying about this. It was something about how, where is the golden rule, and uh, whatever happened to it. And this is like over 150, you know, 100 at least years ago. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Where is it?" He says, "Oh, no problem. We take it out every Sunday and dust it out. It's a prop for the church, like an accolade or whatever else is in the crucifix, whatever is in there. But we never let it intrude into everyday business, you know." So right. the, go the golden we rule is we pretend, more, we pretend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's more something like it's hanging in a museum, and you look yeah. at it and you say that it's beautiful, which is right. nice, but it doesn't accomplish anything doing that. It, you have to have the the structural integrity to embody that, and that's why you're saying the same thing over fourteen thousand different shows and fourteen thousand different times is so valuable, because. It, it is continuing to to reinforce this notion in the people who already have it, and it is introducing it as a new notion to the people that don't. And then this, the, the, there's no substitute for the reinforcement of of this information that love is where it's at, because the economics is where it's at. Information is getting dropped on us from every direction. I mean, most people watch television and watch a bunch of it, and you can't get around what's being dropped on us from that angle alone, not to mention what comes in through schools, churches, advertising on billboards, everything else, and just general way of life, the way people do business, folks you used to look up to, used to be able to look up to, like, the older people in business, and, and now... And we didn't question them, and we didn't have to have a hundred-page contract. Yeah, and and yeah. even if we have the one hundred-page contract, it still doesn't protect us. Yeah, and, if, and you have to have a hundred hire a hundred people to interpret the hundred-page contract. <laughs> Besides that, it's created a whole new genre of economic employment. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so I just wanted to get the viewers to get, and I, I'm sure that they've got it because I've got it. That you you are extremely authentic and I can always and, and how do I tell is that I feel it I I know that what you're presenting on on the show is your truth it you, you're not pretending so when you say to me that you're gonna use the funds uh, you know by selling these books for a bigger cause I 100% believe you I don't question it and I don't want the viewers to to question it if I can help it yeah, well, they can question it if they want. It won't phase me. 
I'm still <laughs> going yeah. to do what I have to do for one thing. For another thing, it will be reported on in another book that this is where it went to. And, and you've hit on probably the most important point that we talked about all day, and that is authenticity. And a lot of people will doubt that other people are authentic because of the place that they're looking from. All right? And anybody that's looking at me, or not anybody, but a lot of people that are looking, the majority of folks that would look at me and say, ah, that guy's not really going to spend the money on wisdom professionals. He's going to go out and snort coke and get hookers or something. That's because that's a per that's what you would do, buddy. Yeah. You know? That's what if you're looking at me and thinking I'm gonna do that, the problem is not in here. I'm not gonna take that personal. All right. Mm -hmm. That's a problem with the person who is like levying that attack. That's not a problem with me. So but unfortunately that's a big societal problem is that everybody's become Again, so cynical and so jaded because they've been promised so many things that haven't happened because they themselves have promised so many things to themselves in the world. Turns that out hasn't happened. Crap and, and <laughs> do it. Yeah. It has, become, it has become the status quo and, it, uh, status quo and it has become acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of our generation. I mean, they know they're full of crap. So they look at everybody who like held on, like I remember back when I was 17, everybody I hung out with was talking about the things that we're talking about now, to some extent, all right? And now all these people, yeah, I'll never go into Walmart, but it's like the Walmart lady. It's like, I'll never go into a place like that. I'll never work on Wall Street. On that well, five, ten years later, they got wives, kids, they're paying bills, wearing three-piece suits and working on Wall Street, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are a couple of decent people that work on Wall Street, but uh, the, the odds decrease once you get full of crap. Once you can't believe yourself, you stop believing everything but once else. You, once you start buying your own lies, yeah, it's yes. over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. When, you convince, when you rationalize, when you convince uh -huh. yourself that it's okay to do something that you know good and goddamn well it's not okay. It's not okay. Yeah. All right, but you convince yourself, you rationalize that oh somebody was going to do it. If I didn't do it, somebody would do it. I might as well get the money for it because somebody else was going to do it anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was going to. And happen. they will cause more damage with it than I would. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, and and I won't get the benefit. But yeah. <laughs> if, yeah, but if everybody, if everybody, as you were saying before, would in a unified manner decide, no, that's that's too morally ugly. I'm not going to do that. It's out of the question. Then all of a sudden, uh, things start making a difference. All those individual drops start forming waves that are big enough to change the course of the ocean. Yeah. And so what I noticed too, Dan, is that what, what has disappeared completely, just like common sense, is fairness. Fairness went out the window. Well, you can buy it. It still exists, but you can buy it. <laughs> 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 it's for sale now. Yeah, yeah which, I, which I guess makes it not fairness anymore, does it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so I just wanted to say that, um, that I really appreciate you very much. Uh, the pleasure is mine. It's always great to be on with you. Yeah, I, I believe that you are a real gem uh, for a network because you are real and you are truthful and you are authentic and there's not a lot of you like the way you present yourself and the way you express yourself out there. So that's why I feel that you are a real unique gem. So thank you very much for being on the network. Um, our conscious hour is is gone. <laughs> We're actually in overtime. Uh, but that's just what happens on these shows, yeah. is, that, is that it feels like five minutes. Can I say one word before sure. we go? Absolutely. www.fearlesspuppy.org. If anybody who's listening is interested in more of this, that would be the place to go. Awesome. And they can also go to consciousevolutionmedia.com. And uh, on the right-hand side, there's all our advertisements. And both of uh, uh, Tan's book, is is in that advertisement area so you can just click on there and go right to this page if you happen to forget about 
what he just said. So, um, again, I appreciate you, respect you tremendously. Thank you for being on the network. And uh, for everybody else, just a reminder that we have one of these Mind, Body, and Soul shows that's been going on for nine years now. Every Thursday, same time, same place, uh, 2 o'clock Mountain, 4 p.m. Eastern, and 1 p.m. Pacific. Until next time, have a wonderful week and a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks for doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks.